Here at Crosswinds, we're on a journey to discover who God created us to be. Father, thank you for being with us today, with me and with all those who are watching. Lord, I know you will speak to us. Holy Spirit, you're alive and your word is living and active. So Lord, stir us up today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're talking about foundations, spiritual stability. We're going to go through a three-part series, and today um, we're going to begin to talk about stability. And how many of you know stability is important? I was raised by a surfer, my dad, and so as a toddler, I was always doing activities that required stability. I mean, as far back as I can remember, I had roller blades on my feet or uh, a skateboard, or I even was taught to surf at probably the age of six. Um, everything I did, riding motorcycles at all required stability. And so fast forward now through my childhood and in my teen years, and I'm in my early 20s. I was newly married. And uh, there was one day where my wife and I, we were living here in Sparks and we were bored. We were sitting at home with nothing to do. And uh, I said, okay, what are we going to do today? And then all of a sudden I had this light bulb moment. Ding, I have a skateboard in the garage. And you know, I haven't skated in 10 years, but why not? Let's, uh, how, why don't I take my skateboard, go to the skate park. It's good exercise, it's fun. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll be able to, um, you know, prove something that, you know, I'm really good at skateboarding to my wife. Why do we try to do that, men? I don't know. It never ends up good. But let me tell you what happened. We got to the skate park and I put it on the ground. I begin to pedal around a little bit, get a feel for it. I'm like, yeah, I still got this. I can still skate. All right, let's take it to another level. Let's go up on top of the ramp and um, I'm getting ready to drop in the ramp and do a little bit, uh, a little bit harder skateboarding, right? And so as I drop in, I go, I pick up some speed and there's this little, it's kind of like a speed bump, a little obstacle. And for some reason, as soon as I hit that speed bump and came back down on the other side, the skateboard completely flew out from underneath my feet and I landed on my head. I was unconscious, I don't know, for at least a few seconds and I ended up having to go to the hospital, okay? So what happened? What happened there? I mean, I was going around in the skate park pretty good with the basics, right? I knew the fundamentals, but as soon as I picked up speed and hit that obstacle, it revealed that I had a weakness, that 10 years of not practicing daily had created a weakness, and that was that I had no stability. Remember I said stability is important. Stability kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the other day I took my daughter to the park down the street, and so she's an only child, and so I take her there so she can play with other friends and, you know, just have a good time. And so at that park, they have a merry-go-round. And it's funny because you'll see kids from, you know, teenager all the way down to her age, which is about six years old, and uh, depending on their age level, they do something different. If you're a teen, usually they want to get that thing going as fast as they can. They want to hang off the edge, be flying around like Superman man, feeling the full effect of the G-force, right? But the little kids, like my daughter, they want to climb towards the center where they're not really feeling the G-force, where it's a lot more stable, right? The, the center has the stability. And so th this reminds me of life. This reminds me that the times that we're living in, they're turbulent. A lot of things are changing, Change is actually exponential right now. Technology is changing. We have the dawning of AI in a whole new way. We see wars all across the world in different ways and skirmishes and uprisings. And there's economic uncertainty. 2024, this is an election year, right? So there's a lot going on in our world. The world is changing rapidly. But here's the thing. Listen to me. We have the power in Christ to remain spiritually stable, our outside circumstances and changing world doesn't mean that we have to be shaken or shooken up or, or even moved by anything that's going on if we have a spiritual stability in Christ. So as we start this new year, as we begin 2024, we're going to evaluate our foundations. It's that unseen part of our lives that gives us stability during the movement and the change and the transformation that's happening around us. So we're going to take a look at our core, at the center of our lives, at our inner man, and make sure that we have the spiritual stability to handle the future, whatever that may be. Because here's the thing, we know we're going to face obstacles, we know we're going to have challenges, but as children of God, we are overcomers. We're champions. I believe that every believer in Christ is a champion. You are a champion. So say that to yourself today. Say, you know what, I'm a champion, no matter what's going on outside of me. And we're going to take a look at the life of another champion. His name was Daniel. 
If you've been around church at all, you know stories about Daniel. He was a great uh, person in the Old Testament, but Today we're going to pick up the story in Daniel chapter 6, and at this point in Daniel's life, you know, he had come to, as an exile, to the the city of Babylon because Jerusalem was conquered by an opposing king, an opposing army, and so at 10 years old, he came to Babylon, and where we pick up the story, it's been decades, it's been decades, but the favor of God and the blessing of God upon his life, he's been risen up, and he's been placed as one of the three most important, powerful people in all of the kingdom. There's the king, King Darius, and then right underneath him, there's three governors controlling all of the kingdom, all of the empire, and he is one of them. And it says in the Bible that he's still about to get raised up to the level of prime minister. But you know what? The other governors, they don't like this too much. They're actually his enemies. They don't like him because he's a Jew. He's not one of them. They don't like the power that he has. They don't like the influence that he has. And they tried to, they began to search him out and see what can we get against Daniel? What bad things can we see in his life that we can expose and remove him from power? And so they began to take a look at his life. But the Bible says that he was found blameless. There was no corruption There was no negligence. There was nothing that he was doing wrong that they could find, that they could pin against him to remove him from from power. So they began to come up with a plan, a conspiracy. They said, you know what? We need to find something that he's doing that's not wrong and make it illegal. We need to find something within his relationship with his God and make that illegal. So they began to watch him. They said, hey, you know what? Daniel, he prays three times a day. This is the thing. This is our moment. So they went to the king, King Darius. They said, hey, King Darius, we want you to make an edict. We want, we want you to make it so that for 30 days, no one can pray to anyone, to any God, or to any man except you. And they convinced him to put this edict into place that could not be repealed. And so this is where we pick up our scripture today. We're going to read through it, and then we're going to highlight three things that really demonstrate Daniel's spiritual stability. So read it with me. It says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, the one we were talking about, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows were, and they opened towards Jerusalem. And three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and they spoke to him about this royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or any human being except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands. And according with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed, You see, the Medes and the Persians had a different government than the Babylonians. When Nebuchadnezzar was king, he could repeal anything he wanted, but the law of the Medes and the Persians was different. So once he made an edict, it stood no matter what. So they said to the king, Daniel, who was one of your exiles from Judah, he pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. And when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and they said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and they threw him into the lion's den. And the king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you, ser- whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating or without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. And at the first light of dawn, the king got up and he hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel! Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I done ever anything wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed, and he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. So today we're going to look at three principles, three keys to Daniel's spiritual stability. Nothing breaks your routine. This is for you. You need to have a routine. You need to let nothing break it. 
I want you to think about Daniel. He's living there. He's one of the third most powerful people in the kingdom. And he has friends that rely upon him. He has family that relies upon him. And because of his position, they experience this favor and uh, just this blessing in life. But now there's this risk because they know that Daniel prays and that if he gets caught, all of that could be stripped away. So I imagine they probably went to Daniel and said, Daniel, just for 30 days, just lay low. Don't pray out loud. Pray in your head or, or pray in your prayer closet, but make sure that you do something to where, you know, nothing hinders the position that God has placed you in, right? You're one of the three most powerful people in this whole empire. We're talking an empire that stretched over three continents. There was 20 million people, at least in this empire. Daniel, don't let anything rob that from you. But Daniel's like, your priorities are wrong. My routine is unbreakable. Nothing should break my routine because my prayer life, it holds more value than my position. It holds more value than my gifting. My prayer life is more more valuable than my talents or my relationships, my relationship with the king. Why? Because my prayer life connects me to God and it's how I honor God in a visible way. My prayer life connects me to the grace of God. Now, I don't know about you watching online, but me, I tend to screw things up on my own. But you know what? I'm completely dependent upon God's grace, and I know that. And it's by God's grace that anything good comes into my life. I know that. I'm aware of that. So that's why I ask God to bless everything I do, every part of my life. I say, Lord, I need you. I need you in my marriage. Lord, I need you for that promotion at work that I'm praying for. I know it's only by your grace that I'll get it. Hey, I'm sick or I'm injured, but Lord, it's by your grace that you can heal me. Maybe you're in college right now and you're trying to further your education, maybe get a master's or a PhD. It's by God's grace that you can do that. Remember, and nothing should break your routine because your routine is what connects you to God. And it begins to pour this this concrete foundation as you day by day, you get in the scriptures and you pray to God and you commune with him. It begins to build this unshakable foundation in your life where it says it doesn't matter what happens around you. It doesn't matter the voices that speak against you. If you're built upon Christ and his word, you won't be shaken. And Daniel knew this. Psalms talks about the blessed person. And in Psalms 1, starting in verse 2, it says this, the blessed person whose delight, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and he meditates upon it day and night, day and night. That person, you want to be that person. I want to be that person because we'll be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season and out of season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do, they prosper. Listen, if we want to have a great year this year, if we want to have a firm foundation, we need to be planted in the word of God day and night. Planted so we won't be shaken, so we won't be shifted, so we won't be blown around by streams of water. We'll have our sustenance, we'll have everything that we need, and we'll yield fruit in every season. Our leaf will not wither. We will prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. That's God's will for you. And it starts with an unbreakable routine. That's the first step. Here's Daniel's second key to spiritual stability. He says, I'm not going to back down. That's for you today. That's for me. Don't back down no matter what. Daniel, he ignored the edict. He said, I don't care what the king said about not praying. I'm not going to stop honoring my God. I'm not going to back down. And even when he was caught, even when the people came and and they caught him praying, we don't see Daniel running and hiding and saying, you know what, I'm going to have to, you know, get out of town so I don't get arrested. We don't see him begging for mercy, right? He said, you know what, I know what I believe and I've stood up and I've already counted the cost. We need to count the cost. Daniel said, you know what? It's better for me to stand up for God and die than to back down and live. And death by lions, I mean, come on. This wasn't a firing squad. This wasn't the gallows. This is death by wild beasts. This is, you know, death by claws, death by teeth. Like he was facing some serious anguish, some pain if he ended up dying this way. But Daniel, he had this foundation. He had built this solid ground inside of him. He actually had a habit of standing up from the moment that he came to Babylon He refused to eat certain foods and and drink certain drinks that violated his diet as a Jewish person. And then there were moments where he had to, to give news from God to kings, which was not the best news, but he did it anyways because it was God's word. So he already had a habit of standing up for what was right. 
And so when this circumstance came, he was able to do it. He was able to do it because he had strengthened his inner man. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And Daniel said, you know what? In order to face the lion's dead, I have to remember that I am that lion. I have to be bold. I have to be righteous. It was his lifestyle. Believers in Christ, we have to embrace becoming outside of our comfort zone. I remember one of my first jobs, the head manager came to me one day and I had another supervisor underneath me and that supervisor was actually a Muslim. And my head manager was talking to me and we were, I don't know what we were talking about, but all of a sudden he said, yeah, you and your supervisor, you, you follow the same God, you know, Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament. But in that moment, the Lord said, no, stand up and tell him the truth. And I said, actually, we don't follow the same God because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. You know what? He's a Muslim. He doesn't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. You know, I spent many years of that job and, you know, I was blessed there. I had the opportunity just to, to witness and to share my faith with other believers. And I believe part of that was because I stood up for God. And then I had another job where, again, the head boss was, was having a leadership meeting with all of us. And he asked everyone to share what they were thankful for going around the room. Yeah, I'm thankful for my family and for my health and for my job. And it got to me and the Lord said, stand up. I said, you know what? I am thankful for my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. There were some awkward stares in the room, some crickets, but then all of a sudden one person who I didn't expect said, amen. Amen. And again, the Lord used me at that job to be a witness for him. Because I wanted to be known for Christ. No matter how many people mocked me, I wanted to be known for Christ and to walk in his grace, to pray and to be a witness. And let me tell you something today. This is the year, church, of no backing down. This is the year where we need to say, I will stand my ground. I'll stand my ground at home, with my friends, at work. And I'm not gonna be commended publicly, but God will open doors for ministry when I stand my ground for him. And let me tell you what, he has good works prepared for you. Just waiting, just as you go into your day and as you meet people, the Lord says, I have people for you to minister to. And when our test comes, like they will, don't back down. Don't avoid it. Don't ignore it. It could be an external test. It could be something you're working on internally, an area of sin or transformation that, that needs to happen. If the Lord brings it to mind or if it happens in your life, don't avoid it. Don't run away from it. Engage it. This is how we become more than conquerors, okay? Psalm 34, 19 says this, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. We're not promised no trouble. We're just promised deliverance from it. And a lot of times our tests come through relationships or through our social life. But let me tell you this, don't quit your job because of a difficult boss or a difficult employee or a coworker. You know what? God could be using you to influence them or just refining you and polishing you through whatever's happening there. Don't leave your spouse because the marriage gets hard. Don't isolate from church because someone offended you. Listen, things happen. People have bad days. There's misunderstandings, but talk it out. Pray it out, work it out, stand your ground and say, you know what? Nothing's going to shake me. Our stability will increase when we commit to standing our ground in Christ. Okay, that's what Daniel did. Now third, the third key, prepare for the prize. Prepare for the prize. Daniel, oh, he was able to look past his circumstances. He was able to look towards the future. He said, you know what? If I die, at least I did right. And I'm going to go to be with my father in heaven. But if I live, I know that the, the Lord's going to raise me up. He's going to vindicate me. And I'm going to have a testimony. Regardless, if I do right, I cannot fail. And again, he, there was no outrage. There was no cry of injustice against his enemies or against the king. He just stayed humble. He just trusted God. He humbled himself because he knew the promise of God. Psalm 147, 6, the Lord lifts up the humble and he cast the wicked down to the ground. Daniel was lifted out of the lion's den. His enemies, they were cast into the lion's den because of God's promise. And because Daniel's spiritual stability in the test, oh, great things happen. Let me tell you what, it's right there at the end of Daniel chapter six. This is what King Darius says. Remember, the most powerful person of the most powerful empire, 20 million people, three continents. He sent this message out to everyone. Listen to it. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must 
fear and reverence the God of Daniel. How many people look at your life and begin to fear and reverence God? How many people look at my life and begin to fear and reverence God? I want to have a testimony like that because I stood my ground for Christ. He continues, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Can you see how powerful one man's commitment to prayer and to devotion to God is? The gospel message went out to a whole empire because one man said, you know what? I'm not backing down. I'm not breaking my routine. I'm not breaking my habit. I'm not going to be intimidated. And the name of God was lifted up. It was magnified. The message of God went out and Daniel prospered because he kept his eyes on the prize of the future. You know what? The Lord, he wants to bless you this year. He wants to bless you financially, in your health, in your career. He wants to bless your family. He has an amazing life ordained for you. And remember this, the prize, the ultimate prize is Christ himself. It's knowing him. There's nothing better than waking up and knowing that God is your father. There's nothing better than knowing that when you screw up, when you mess up, that there's forgiveness for you. There's grace for you. There is nothing better than knowing that in your weakness, you are strong because you have the Holy Spirit of God living within you. This is your reality. So, so build your foundation this year. Listen, I want you to put this message into action. So we're going to look at three action steps that we can really begin to live this out. Number one, start praying and reading the Bible daily. Do it daily. Don't feel bad if you're not doing it now because only 10% of people do. But even though that's the statistic, don't stay there. Don't be in that 10% anymore. I want you to imagine how blessed, how favored you will be if you begin to get into the word of God on a daily basis. Create that unbreakable routine. Say, you know what? There's no excuse. I'm not going to allow any excuse. If I'm a night person, I'm going to read at night. If I'm a morning person, I'm going to read it in the morning. If I'm a digital person, I'm going to read it on my phone or on a tablet. Or if I need to do it with a paper Bible, I'm going to do it. If I'm traveling, you know what I do? I take a very thin traveling Bible. Why? Because I don't want anything to break my routine. And when you do that, when you get into the word of God on a regular basis, it's like you're going to the bank and you're making deposits. You're, you're putting you know, value in, you're putting value in, you're putting the word in, you're putting, you know, money as it were in, because later on you'll have something to withdraw from. When you face that difficult moment, when you have that, that hard time at work or that, that challenge in your family or that struggle in your house, you have something that the Holy Spirit can bring up out of you, the scripture, the very word of God, the living act of word of God. And he says, remember, remember my word to you. Remember what I said to you. And then you can live upon that. You can embrace it. Faith can begin to rise up and you can overcome whatever it is you're facing. Okay, here's the second thing you need to do. Challenge yourself this year to do something difficult. We all have something in our life that we know that we should be doing, but we're not doing it. Maybe you're kind of like an introvert and you've never joined a connect group. You don't really like being around people too much. It's kind of uncomfortable, but I challenge you this year, get outside of your comfort zone join a group. We have them right here at Crosswinds. Begin to get to know some other people. And I know that, that God will grow you. Hey, maybe you're one of those per persons who's like, I don't like to read. I just, I don't like reading. It's not my thing. I want to challenge you this year. Commit to reading. Reading has been shown to, to lower stress as much as 68%. And I know that we live in a stressful world, right? So we could all benefit from that. And actually, if you read before going to bed, you're going to sleep 50% better than someone who doesn't read. And I know that we all need some good rest for our bodies, for our souls. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe you're saying, you know what, I just, I can't get into it. I can't get into a rhythm or routine of exercise or taking care of my health. But if you exercise regularly, you will lower your risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia, depression, you know, I could go on and on from hard things that we know we should be doing, but we're not doing it. And you know what it is right now. God's probably brought something to mind. I want to challenge you this year. Begin to do it and you will grow. Here's the third thing. Begin to prophesy over your life. 
The Bible says that we call things that are not as though they are. The Bible says that as he is, so are we in this world. And if we begin to think and speak God's word, his promises to us, it'll give us a dream. It'll give us a vision for our lives. It'll help us not to be nearsighted, but to to be farsighted and to have hope for a future. I like this quote. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your life. Be led by the dreams in your heart. That's Roy T. Bennett. So I want you to begin to proclaim good things over your life. If you're depressed right now, begin to say, I have joy in Jesus. If you're sick, you've been dealing with something, say, I am healed in Christ and begin to proclaim it every day. If you're lonely, say, I am comforted and I believe for good relationships this year. If your family is broken, you know what? God is the God of reconciliation. Believe you will will be restored. Maybe you're struggling financially. But you know what? The Lord says, I will prosper you. I will help you to become generous. You know what? The borrower is the servant to the lender. But you know what? If you you give to God, if you take care of the poor, and if you manage and steward your finances, he will prosper you. And he will give you the ability to do that. So no, no matter where you are now, begin to proclaim it. I will become generous and prosperous. You know what? Something happens when we say it we speak it out, we begin to believe it. And as we begin to believe it, faith begins to rise up and faith includes actions and it'll help us to begin to live the reality that we want and mountains will begin to move. This is your year. You are destined to prosper. Daniel, he had this stability, this foundation that he had built in his life. And, you know, he faced so many challenges, but he was able to have the Lord's deliverance get him through them all because he had founded himself upon the word of God, upon a relationship with God. So no matter what came into his life, he was not shaken. And this is our plan this year. We don't want to be shaken. And we have access to that stability in Christ. So right now, if you're saying, I want a good life in 2024, I want to go to new levels. I want to experience a new level of peace. I want to, you know, experience the comfort of God in my life. I want to experience the direction of God, you know, showing me where to go and how to live. It starts with making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. If you haven't done that, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. And all you have to do is repeat this prayer after me with an honest heart, and God will set you free and write your name in the book of life. So repeat after me right now if that's you. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, just look below wherever you're watching. There's going to be a link for you and you can click on that. We will reach out to you and help you get started on your journey being a believer in Christ. And if the sermons touched you today, which I hope it did, I want you to help us out, get the word of God out there and share it on your social media platform. So we're going to be getting into our winter connect group season. Like I already talked about, connect groups are great. So uh, if you're not in one, get in one. Uh, You can do that by going to our groups page. Uh, That's fine on our website, uh, crosswindsnv.org. Officially, it's going to start the week of January 14th. So please look into that and get plugged in. Um, Also, we're going to have a men's breakfast. We had a lot of great men's breakfasts last year in 2023. And we know that this year is going to be even greater. So we want to invite you to the next one. It's going to be Saturday, January 27th at 8 a.m. right here at Crosswinds. We're going to have good food. Um, We're going to have a great word by Pastor Dave. And uh, we're going to worship the Lord together. As always, I want to thank you for your generosity, for your great giving. 2023 was amazing. God did great things through your generosity. I want to encourage you to keep being a generous person that sows into God's kingdom. Here are the ways to give, crosswindsnv.org. You can text to 84321. Uh, You can do it through the app, Secure Give. Uh, You can do it right here in service. Or if you need to mail a check, you can do that to 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. Well, you are blessed by God. So as always, let's declare... Like I talked about his truth over our lives, let's speak it out. Here it goes. Let's do it together. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord and I walk in the promises of God's holy word 
because God has a miracle for me and you. Remember, Crosswinds, we're better together. God bless you.